I'm very happy to have uh, an old friend of mine, Paul Diaz, the CEO of Kindred Healthcare. And Paul and I have uh, known each other for quite a long time, uh, definitely prior to Kindred. Um, and he's obviously one of the leaders of the skilled nursing industry and, and, and really the, uh, the healthcare industry in this country. Um, well, that's kind. Thank you. Well, you know, uh, you, you've done a great job. And, and you know, last summer, uh, with the announcement from CMS of the 11.1% Medicare cut, uh, average cut, and I know for some people it's obviously higher, uh, that was a shocker for the skilled nursing industry, really caught off guard. Um, while everyone was expecting a cut, no one saw this magnitude. Did, did the skilled nursing industry just really get caught up in the whole deficit cutting problem? Well, I think, I think there's an element of that, but let's be fair. Um, we always knew that um, it was the intention of CMS that RUGS 4 be budget neutral. Um, we, uh, we all had a sense that, uh, at least from a rate perspective, that, that rates were trending above RUGS 3 rates. <clears throat> and so I think we all, and I think it was certainly in the, in the, in the public discussions, you know, expected that there would be, that CMS would, you know, do some recalibration of rates. <clears throat> um, we were, I think, um, uh, all surprised that, um, that the recalibration was done, you know, seemingly all at one time. I'm particularly concerned um, that, um, that our commentary and concerns about the other changes, which were, which was, there had been really no economic impact analysis done in, in the regulations, weren't really taken into account. And so I think that um, it was and continues to be the position of most of, of the skilled nursing providers that, that we should be working to get to budget neutrality over two or three years as one thinks about a 10-year budget window, and that the therapy changes should be taken into account in, in that regard. And they weren't. And they weren't. And they weren't. Um, <clears throat> and you know, the, I think the, the problem I thought that the industry really had was with this cut, that CMS, you know, and it came very quickly, um, CMS seemed to ignore um, any impact um, that RUGS 4 from a year ago had on quality of care and what the changes would do to quality of care. So how do you, I mean, how do you measure quality of care at Kindred and especially in regard to, you know, it, it, assuming we have accountable care organizations and how that will fit in? Well, let's, let, so let's talk about it in, in the broader context of the, of the first question. I, I think it is fair to say that there's very little health policy discussions going on right now. So things about quality and outcomes, there's no oxygen in the room because the entire dialogue right now is about politics and, and the politics of budgets and deficits. That's the only thing that anybody is talking about and has been talking about really since the beginning of the summer. So, you know, I think you were right to say that part of what happened with the 11%, you know, is between OMB and, and the deficit, and it happened the same weekend of, of the big deficit debacle, uh, there probably just was no oxygen in the room to talk about what the impact on quality or access to services might be. Um, there's no doubt that costs went up in the transition from RUGS 3 to RUGS 4. We don't think that that was really taken into account. But I think the more important um, thing that we're pretty proud of is that as we looked at um, our success from uh, over the last several years through RUGS 3, through this transition of RUGS 4, we are doing exactly what the policymakers asked us to do. We've lowered length of stay significantly. So and that matters in terms of budget neutrality too. Our return to home is over 50%. Um, our clinical outcomes, our survey outcomes, our, we, we monitor the rehab outcomes of, um, uh, through using a modified FIMS score like the rehab hospitals do. And we've published all those clinical results, all those outcome measures, including rehospitalizations that's very topical in a quality report every year, and it's in our website. And we, in all our policy discussions, that's where we always start. We start with, hey guys, the basic value proposition that you wanted from skilled nursing is not to have long-term care, but have efficient short-term care and get people home whenever possible. Obviously, we have chronic care patients and uh, that, that we have a responsibility to. But in terms of reducing rehospitalizations, getting people home, rehab outcomes, functional improvement, We've been very transparent about that, and again, you can find our quality report on, on our website. But they're not listening. 
but they're, they're, not, they're listening. not listening. And you, I mean, <clears throat> Kindred, you guys have been really working hard on your cluster effort, uh, you know, having LTAX, skilled nursing, home health, and hospice. And inpatient rehab. In, yeah. And the inpatient rehab in, in cluster markets. Um, are managed care companies noticing that? And, and, and are you able to measure, you know, within those clusters how well you do the business? Yeah, so I'll steal a line from a, a friend of mine. With, you know, we, we're trying to really stay focused, even with all of the noise around these budget discussions and more rate cuts and all that, on, on where the puck is going and trying to skate to the puck, you know. And, and where we think the puck is going is to more managed care. Now, I think that whether one talks about Medicare Advantage or the, the care of the dual eligibles and, and the significant pressure that Medicaid is under and will be under in 2014, under health care reform and the expansion of coverage. You know, I think um, senior uh, sector and, and skilled nursing has to be really thinking about developing programs and services and uh, that are geared to, to managing the dual eligibles. And so we do think there's a tremendous amount of appetite today and growing in integrated care at a local level, and we see that in the context of discussions around accountable care organizations, bundling, and and the and the growth and the consolidation we're likely to see in, in managed care. So that I mean you, that that's going to be ramping up in your mind, regardless of what happens there's, in the overall healthcare. There's world. no question, and you know, and just going back to, to to one other point, you know. As a technical matter, you know, one could see maybe CMS is overcorrecting here, probably overcorrecting on the therapy changes. But the real problem, see, you know, is Medicaid. Medicaid rates are flat to down. Governors are keeping the provider tax revenue. So if Medicaid rates are growing at one percent and our costs are growing at two percent on sixty-five percent of our days, the skilled nursing industry is in a big hole, and and that's. That's gotten lost a little bit in, because of the headlines around the 11%. Medicaid is a big part of the problem. Well, I think it's also gotten lost because Medicaid, everyone just assumes it's a loser. And what you're saying is that if it's a loser today, it's a bigger loser tomorrow. I think it just gets right. tougher. Right. I mean, I think right. it's hard to imagine it getting better on Medicaid right. over the next five to ten years. But let's, get, let's talk about your LTAC business. Your LTAC business, and I would argue that, that Kindred, as a post-acute provider is probably in the best position to handle, especially the 11% Medicare cut for skilled nursing, uh, because you have your LTAC business, which didn't get cut. Um, but investors seem to be ignoring this, and I, I, don't, under, I don't understand. <laughs> we don't understand it either. <laughs> well, I mean, I, look, I think in, investors in healthcare services, period, right now, HCA, Kindred, the baby, the bath water, the tub, the towels, everything's been thrown out the window. There's not a portfolio manager in America that wants to touch health care right now. Because all health care, LTAX, inpatient rehab, you know, hospitals, everybody, pharma, everyone is on the list or some list. And so capital is not going to go with this level of uncertainty. So I, I think you... You, know, you, you have a dynamic now that, that no one's looking at the fundamentals. So they're certainly not looking at the incredible success we've had with the rehab care deal. Our rehab business, which is really doing very well, our long-term acute care hospitals, our rehab hospitals, and or, you know, or the general diversification. And we are, we are more diversified than others. Um, at the end of the day, though, we're going to have to still be very successful, and, and we have to compete in every single market with some really good local regional operators and other companies. So... Um, right now, we are in a better position just because of the diversification financially, but we have to sort of earn that every day. Right. And speaking of the rehab acquisition, you closed that uh, this past summer. Uh, how's that integration going? Is it as, as planned, better than expected? Well, a and, yeah, and how are those assets um, going to help you in terms of dealing with the Medicare cuts? Well, you know, we, we've talked a lot about this when we were at least Q2 earnings, and, and we, um, we provided guidance for 11. We closed the rehab care acquisition on, on June 1st, uh, a month early, and we also gave preliminary guidance uh, for 2012, which was obviously intended to give people a floor uh, of the valuation. And, um, I mean, you know, we're trading at five times 
six times, you know, our 2012 guidance. So people don't believe our guidance. Right. You know, um, we have a high degree of confidence in the guidance that, that we that we've given. And part of that is because the integration with rehab care has gone very well. Um, the synergies are real. They are clearly, you know, going to be a, 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 an offset to the rate cuts. We updated our synergy estimate to $55 million in 2012 and $65 million for 13. Wow, that's great. And um, and you know, the, and more importantly, the guys are just doing a great job. Ben, our COO, at, we're we're executing. The the teams and the culture have come together. So. But it's a bad situation. I mean, you know, we, we put out the, the, the number. It's, you know, it's approximately $115 million of negative impact for these rules for us. So it's, it's a big number. Well, talk about, you know, positive impact and negative impact. Remember, uh, uh, just before the RUGS 4 went into effect, October 1, 2010, I did a little story on Kindred, looking at Kindred's uh, uh, unencumbered assets and <coughs> do an evaluation of that that you own. And the valuation of it, and it was something like less than 15% of your business, but it was just that small part was worth more than the entire market cap of the company. And with the rehab care acquisition, I mean, isn't that isn't that story? And I haven't done I haven't done an update in the analysis yet, but isn't that story even more compelling today? No, there's no question. Um, that the company is worth a, is a is a lot more valuable today than it was a year ago. And no one's going to break up the company and sell the assets. But I mean, no one's. I mean, again, you know, why are investors missing this? Is it just that they're throwing everything into the same bucket? Yeah, I think I think everyone's just you know, the fear is is for the, in terms of the public you know markets is is there as we saw yesterday, you know, across the board in all in all companies. I think that you know our real estate. You know, is collateral for our term loans. So you know, and and that helped finance the rehab care deal. It was a very important part of why we didn't want to do you know a dividend recap with with our real estate. We you know, and and part of the reason the rehab care deal was so successful is we didn't overpay, and we were very disciplined about the financing. We got a really good financing deal, and and so today we have a lot of capacity under our revolver. You know, almost $350 million of capacity under our revolver. The ability to expand uh, up to about $500 million uh, in terms of our term loan and our revolver. And so, you know, we're trying to think, look ahead to 13 and 14 and how we're going to continue to grow. And I do think investors, you know, if, if you look at our guidance, um, our guidance uh, is, suggests that we'll do 275 to $300 million of operating cash flow, which we, we've talked about, you know, publicly. That our routine capex is about 125 million, um, so that gives us a, a tremendous amount of, of, of free cash flow to continue to pay down debt or continue to grow in our cluster markets. And uh, we recently announced a, a 53 million dollar home care deal out west in our cluster sure. markets that we're very excited about. And you know, so we're we're going to keep our heads down and continue to look for you know opportunistic ways to grow. Well, talk about opportunistic ways when you look at the Medicare cut in a kind of perverse way, is that going to open up acquisition opportunities for you in the skilled nursing side? There's Maybe nothing the skilled... good about there's <laughs> nothing good about this rule. Well, <laughs> other than other than people may sell at a at a lower price for you. Well we've been doing this for a long time. It, it, people tend to dig in more than they, uh, you know, um, but you know there could be some opportunities. You know, we, we have been very selective acquirers, you know, um, over over the last ten years, you know, at Kindred, and, and we'll continue to be that. And, but um, if we can find really good assets, like we did last year in Dallas and, and in Los Angeles, um, we love to tuck in, you know, high quality skilled nursing assets that we can then turn into transitional care centers. Uh, you know, that, that we can programmatically and with some expansion capital and renovation capital, move, you know, move to our subacute model. And, uh, and hopefully there'll be more opportunities like that. Good. And then lastly, uh, you know, 2012 is the year of the election. Uh, is there a fear that, that, that given the heated, heated arguments going on in Washington, that 2012, from a business, from a financial, from everything, is going to be a dead year, just no decisions being made, because everyone's waiting to see what happens with the election? I think that's already happened. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think, sadly, um, you know, at a time we need leadership, you know, um, and this isn't a senior living, it's right. a, a, you know, an American issue. Um, 
we're sort of paralyzed, you know, and, and, and some of it is the extreme views of, 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 of some folks um, on certain issues um, where we really need to make decisions and, and move on, but, but I fear that, um, you know, we're so polarized and that that's going to continue through the presidential election. It's, mm -hmm. it's hard to imagine that, you know, people's positions are going to, you know, soften, uh, but I hope I'm wrong. Yes. I, I hope so too, but I'm, I'm not holding out. I'm not holding my breath for it. No, but thank you for the time. It's well, good luck, and uh, I'm, you know, I hope it continues to go well with rehab care. And uh, so we, and we have a great team. Everyone's working hard, and you know, we're we're, we're just going to keep putting one foot in front of the other. So. Good. All right. Well, good, good luck. To see you. Thank Thanks. you.